Hi, I'm Steve Plach, and I'll be your host for this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Nonprofit Spotlight is uh, a production of the volunteers here at Community Television, and every month uh, we highlight a local nonprofit doing wonderful work in our community. And this month we're very pleased to welcome the Literacy Program from the Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County. And I'm here at Board of Government, uh, Jeannie D. Welcome, Jeannie. Nice to be here. Yes, and Jusiri Jenkins Glenn. Yes. Jusiri, welcome to you. Thank you. Before we get in to talk more about the literacy program and all the wonderful work that you do, we have a short uh, clip that we'd like to show, and then we'll come back and, and we'll talk a little bit about the program. Great. My name is Linda Murphy, and I've been a volunteer with the literacy program for seven years. I tutored three different students, all with the name of Maria as it turns out. I'm on the outreach committee and on the advisory board and um, I help out. My name is Sandy Warren and I've been working with the literacy program for about nine years, long time. And I do many things. First and foremost, I uh, tutor a student because that's what the program is really all about, helping uh, people learn English one-on-one. -on -one. And I've been doing that. I've had several students, but with my current student for almost two years. And I also serve on the advisory committee and uh, the outreach committee. Tutoring is about creating a relationship with an adult who is very motivated to better his or her literacy skills in English, reading, writing, speaking, and listening and understanding. And it's a one-on-one -on -one situation where you meet, the tutor meets with the student, you become friends. And that motivated adult student learns to communicate reading, writing, speaking, listening in English. And it changes that student's life. And it also changes the life of the tutor. It's actually really an amazing experience uh, because these are people who are very, very eager to learn and really want to learn English for many different reasons, but the ones that come up most often are to help their children in school and with homework and uh, to enable them to be able to get better jobs. And some of them are going studying for their GED or uh, their citizenship, but mostly they're trying to just improve their English so it will help them in their lives. One of my students with whom I worked for three years, one of my Marias, she said she wanted to pass the literacy test, excuse me, the citizenship test. 100 questions plus reading and writing. We worked on it. She was willing to go to Watsonville to take a class on Saturdays, she passed her citizenship test. And I went to the uh, celebration, of, and I sat with her family. It was a very proud moment. Now, she did that because she had access to the literacy program one-on-one -on -one tutoring. It's not something you're going to get at night school. She couldn't go to night school anyway because she worked nights. So I've, I've seen how courageous our students are because it's very difficult to learn to read and write and speak and understand. In English, it is not an easy language. And the way we speak, we speak so quickly, we use idioms all the time. It is not an easy path. And yet, our students are committed to learning. They've been through a lot, but they're very brave souls. Literacy changes lives, and it really does for the better. Uh, you really feel like you're impacting somebody's life. Well, that's a great story about uh, the citizenship test. It's just wonderful, and it gives kind of our audience an idea of some of the great work the literacy program does. Jeannie, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with the literacy program. 
Well, I've <coughs> spent my life running nonprofits mm -hmm. and also oh. doing fundraising. And previously worked for Watsonville Wetlands Watch, another wonderful oh, nonprofit in our absolutely, county. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I put I was, that on our list for a future show. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, and I was hired um, to help um, help the program break even. Mm -hmm. It's you know, with nonprofits, um, it's always a struggle to balance the books. Right. Um, we're always doing fundraising, mm -hmm. and I had background in that area, and right. that was one of the reasons I was hired. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the reasons I was so interested in this was way back when I was in high school, I tutored a student. Oh, is that right? And I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I just grew up in a family that highly valued education. Mm -hmm. And so one of my friends sent me the job opening notice. And I looked at it and I said, this could work. And I applied and I really liked the interview committee, one of whom was our program assistant. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I got the job. That's wonderful. And Jasiri, you're a volunteer here at uh, Community Television yes. and, and one of the people who really helps us do a lot of the programming here that we produce. Um, but your mother works for the literacy program. So yes. tell us a little bit about your mom and, and her work. Yes, well, she recently became involved with the Volunteer Center uh, literacy program. And um, she, was, she was motivated by uh, the fact that my great grandpa, her grandpa, could not read and she mm. did not find that out until she was in college. And so um, doing her own studies, she realized this is an important thing and I want to help teach adults how to read. Mm -hmm. And she always knew that was something that she wanted to do. And uh, the time came around where she wanted to get involved with volunteer work. She was at the uh, downtown Santa Cruz library oh, with right? my daughter yeah. and she asked the librarian in the children's section uh, where she could get training and they recommended her to the volunteer center uh, for the literacy program mm -hmm. and that's how she yeah. signed up for the next orientation. That's wonderful. Yeah. So Jeannie tell us a little more about the program in terms of maybe staffing and the number of people that you're really uh, enrolling in the programs and then that kinds of thing. Sure. So we have basically one and a half staff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm full time and our program assistant, Hisela Soto, uh, is half time. And she is just a wonderful assist to the program because she's very fluently bilingual in ah, Spanish and English. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. And the majority of our students do speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and she also has very good social skills. So if there is a problem with mm -hmm. someone coming to tutoring or they feel unsure of themselves or whatever, mm -hmm. she can talk to them on the phone in Spanish and put them at ease. Absolutely, and yeah. she's very good at doing yeah. that. So she's a big asset to our program. So they're the two of us. Mm -hmm. And then we have about 220 tutors right now. Oh, is that right? And about 260 students. Wow. So well, that's a relatively large program, ambitious program then. That's wonderful. It is. We've yeah. been able to expand. Um, we've had great support from the community. Mm -hmm. And a number of our tutors, um, because we now have a big waiting list, we have 85 on our waiting oh, list. Really? Um, a number of our tutors have agreed yeah. to teach two or three students instead right. of just one. Mm -hmm. And we'll get back uh, later to how people can find out about more information, how they can enroll mm -hmm. and whatnot. But give us your, your website and contact information so people you know, who are more interested in this program can either donate or they can perhaps uh, do some orientation to become a volunteer. Sure. Our website is literacysantacruz.org mm -hmm. okay. and our phone number is 831-427-5077. Good. And we'll repeat that a couple of different times. So people, uh, these shows we like to produce are evergreen. So we'll be able to, to do this show and repeat it and rebroadcast it a number of times. Oh, great. So really get people to you know, kind of great. have an opportunity to understand and appreciate the great work that's being done. Jasiri, uh, your mom has some stories, I'm sure, yes. from her time as a literacy program uh, participant. Uh, tell yeah. us about some of them. Well, you know, she's fairly new to the program, but she has um, started with a woman who also has a son, um, and she's helping her learn to read. Mm -hmm. And um, what what I thought was really nice, uh, she was at the library, brewery, and she was looking for books, um, not just for the mom, but also for the mom's son, because she thought it was very important that they work together on um, 
the mom learning how wow. to read mm -hmm. and um, her son being a part of that process. Mm -hmm. And so when she went to the library, she got books that were in English and Spanish, right. which would um, not only enforce uh, whatever they were doing in their mm -hmm. um, sessions together, but it would also um, enforce the son reading mm -hmm. and also his um, reading in Spanish too, because it is important right. that he have both of those mm -hmm. skills and yeah. both of those languages. Interesting. And Jinya, I'm sure there's a broad age range of the people, the, the participants, but do you, do you break those uh, programs down into age groups when, you, when you're teaching at all? No, we don't. No. Yeah, and uh, when people uh, come to the literacy program, um, how many of them are there to be able to uh, associate better, uh, professional purposes for citizenship as we saw? You know, wh wh what's the main goal for people there, I think? Well, we don't have a count of particular goals, mm -hmm. um, but some of the main reasons that people come right. are they want to get a job, yeah. they want to get a better job, they want to go to college, mm -hmm. And as Jasiri mentioned, they want to help with their child in school. They yes. want to be able to talk to the child's teachers. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to go to parent-teacher conferences right. and to help the kids with homework. Mm -hmm. And are there any uh, particular programs that you're offering that you'd like to talk about uh, that people would be interested in knowing about? Uh, well, what we do is we, when the student comes in, mm -hmm. we have them give, mm -hmm. us, give us their basic information, right. and then we give them a long list of goals and ask them to check off which oh. ones they're interested okay. in. So then the tutor is going to work with the student in relation to what the student's goals are. Mm -hmm. So it's very individualized. Right. We feel that we're a niche program, hmm. so a lot of people can't go to adult school because it's 12 hours a week, either in the morning or the evening. Of course, yeah. And a lot of our students work, mm -hmm. or they work two jobs, mm -hmm. or they don't have childcare, or they don't have a car, and all these kinds of things um, apply. And so our tutors will meet the student at the time that the student's available. Mm -hmm. And so it works really well for a tutor that you know, maybe the tutor is working and they can only tutor on weekends, but mm -hmm. we have yes. students who want to be tutored on the weekend. Oh, I see. Or students that want to be tutored in the evening. Mm -hmm. yes. Or then we have mothers that are at home with small children and oh. they'd like to be tutored in their home with the kids. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So your hours are flexible, your locations are flexible, you're really right. tailoring mm -hmm. it to the needs of the participants. Right. Now, do you do in your capacity, uh, you were mentioning some of the raising money and the, and the developmental work, do you do a lot of that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're the person that does it. I'm, 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 yes. I'm gathering, right? Yeah. Okay. And is that challenging? Do you are you able to draw from uh, funding sources uh, from ESL programs and things like that? Well, we do have a, a grant from the California Department of Education. Okay. Um, and um, that depends on how many students make a level gain each year on a ah. standardized test. Okay. Uh, I'm really sorry to have found out that this year. Um, the money from the federal government was less, uh -huh. and so um, the allocation per pass test mm -hmm. was less, um, which is very disappointing. Yeah. Um, and I just talked with our Sacramento representative today, so we're going to be yeah. contacting our elected officials mm -hmm. in Congress to hopefully yeah. have that not happen again. Yeah. Uh, but we do get a good share of our funding from the state. Mm -hmm. And then we have a contract with the county to provide tutoring in the jails. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Okay. And then about 40 to 50% of our income yeah. comes from fundraising. Uh -huh. And how much, that's fascinating to me, how much tutoring do you do in jails? Uh, a friend of mine, Craig Wilson, is the new chief deputy, the mm -hmm. jail administrator, mm -hmm. a wonderful guy, very enlightened man, mm -hmm. in fact. Uh, how much uh, teaching uh, for is, 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 does go on in, in the jail through the literacy program? Well, right now we have about 20 tutors in the jails. Is that right? Right, and they're working with about 30 students. Yeah. Wow. So now these are all volunteers. They're all volunteers. So now what's the process for an orientation for a volunteer? Say, myself, uh, at one point I took an intensive uh, Spanish language course, for, you know, total immersion, and I'm probably proficient but not fluent. But if mm -hmm. I became fluent and was interested, for instance, in becoming a volunteer, what would be the, the pathway that I would take? 
Well, first of all, you don't have to speak Spanish or ah, another well, language. That, that's a revelation. That's right. well, thank goodness then. I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, check that off my list. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. uh, we have some very experienced retired teachers who serve as our volunteer trainers, and they will train you to teach ESL. Right. Uh, so uh, we have uh, 16 hours worth of training. Mm -hmm. The first hour is considered our orientation. Okay. So we ask people to come to this one hour orientation and there are two of them coming up in November, right. one on the 7th at 10 a.m. and one on the 17th at 6 p.m. Okay. at the Volunteer Center. Right. Uh, so you come to the orientation and you get details about what it is okay. like to be a tutor, what are the requirements, mm -hmm. what to expect and all that kind of thing. Um, and then we will have training in January and March. Okay. Now, is that an annual thing? So, for instance, when we broadcast this program, people will be able to say, if it's broadcast six months from now, they'll be able to say, well, there's a training coming up in January or March. Is that there? It's on a regular schedule? Um, pretty much there, January, March, September, October. Yeah. We close, found close it, enough, yeah. 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 Um, and people can always go to our website and get yeah. the, the And your website again dates. is? LiteracySantaCruz.org. Great, great, great. And just very uh, fascinating when we're talking about your mom being involved in this, and certainly great, great work. Does she have, does she share other stories with you about this, kind of the success stories that she's had? It must be yeah. very gratifying work as, as, yeah, as Jeannie is, you know, really, you know, explaining to us. Absolutely, yeah. She's, she said that it's very exciting yet intimidating mm. because she's dealing with a very vulnerable aspect of someone's life mm -hmm. and she wants to make sure to handle it with care yeah. every time. And, um, and so it's a, it's a big duty, but it yeah. kind of motivates her to give her best effort because yeah. she knows that they're, they are giving their best right. effort and, uh, and, and they deserve to have that yeah. from her. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really great, you also mentioned the, uh, the people that you have that help the tutors. And my mom has mentioned that she has a, a mentee who helps her with lesson plans and helps her with her concerns and her insecurities that mm -hmm. she has. And so she feels like she has a support yeah. system with the literacy program to successfully carry out her duty to uh, her clients. So it's, it's a really great program. And it sounds like you have a very uh, welcoming program, and that's mm -hmm. particularly important when people are kind of reluctant because they're stigmatized by their inability to speak English. There's such an emphasis on yes. that. They kind of break through that societal yes. barrier of right. being able to say, I'm going to participate in this program because I'm going to learn English. Right. Let me tell you an interesting story Please. about how we have got some of our students. So we had a student. Her name was um, Blanca, okay, and she worked as a cook. And she wanted to learn, improve her English skills so she could get some better position, maybe a better cook's job or some other type of position. So she started working with our program. And then about a year later, her daughter called up and wanted to participate in our program. And so she joined our program. Mm -hmm. And then a year after that, her husband wanted to wow. participate Is in the program. Right? <laughs> and about the same time, her sister-in-law asked to participate oh. in the program. So you can see how this spreads out yes. and reaches all kinds of people because yeah. one person has success. Yeah. Yeah. And so it really is a program that changes mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. And I'm hoping that um, your viewers will help us meet the need to help someone read. Absolutely, and how can we do that? <laughs> so what they could do is they could attend one of our orientations mm -hmm. and uh, then we have, as I said, this 16 hours training. The orientation is the first hour. Mm -hmm. And then there's 14 hours of training spread over four sessions. We have, we alternate, we'll have an evening training and then we'll have an afternoon training. And then there's one hour of test administration training mm -hmm. because our students do um, get tested on a okay. standardized and right. nationwide standardized test. So there's some measurable results? That there are, is mm -hmm. measurable results yeah, okay. and our students do very well and mm -hmm. we attribute that to the individualized attention mm -hmm. that they get. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know your mother is working with mm -hmm. these people this particular woman and, yes. and paying attention not only to her but to her son. Yes. And something I just have to mention is how, how rewarding this is for the tutor. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can imagine. Because you are working with this person and you can see them learning before your very mm -hmm. eyes yes. and you can see their child getting interested 
and you can see that they've made progress. Right. And then you give them this test in the spring and you can see that they've progressed one or two grade levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> most of our tutors are spending only about two hours a week. Oh, really? So maybe an hour, an hour and a half in a lesson mm -hmm. and a little bit of travel time and a little bit of preparation right. time. And in that two hours a week, that student might progress a grade or two grade levels. Uh -huh. If you can imagine <coughs> progressing a whole grade level or two yeah. grade levels of course, yeah. with two hours a week of right. tutoring, right. you know, that tells you how effective mm -hmm. the tutoring is. Mm -hmm. And that's so rewarding to yeah. the tutor. Aside from the fact that most of our tutors really do form friendships with the students that yes. they tutor. Mm -hmm. They get invited to baptisms and birthday parties. That's just wonderful, yeah. yeah. It, it's delightful. Yeah. And, and then you as the tutor are learning more about this other person's culture. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, and generally realizing that this person in front of you has made a lot of sacrifices to get yes. where they are. They're probably a very hard worker, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and they're very motivated. And and it it for me it reminded me of my grandparents who came to this country as mm -hmm. immigrants, and you know kind of gave me a glimpse of what might yeah. have been some of the issues right. they had to deal with. And I think that cultural enrichment is such an important element of any really successful it program. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, now you say that uh, sometimes you'll do it in, in the home of the person who's training. Mm -hmm. Will they, do, is, it, is, it, is the one-on-one, -on -one, is that the model or do they do one on two or three if there's a family that wants to learn? Um, it, it can be one on two or three. Um, often it's, most of our um, tutoring is one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes there's another family member, member like this uh, couple that I mentioned where both the husband and wife are being tutored. And then sometimes we have small classes. Oh, so nice. some of the local churches have hosted uh, classes okay. for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I know one of the housing facilities, um, more than one, a couple of the housing mm -hmm. facilities. And also we have a class at the Day Worker Center. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Maria is a friend. She's a wonderful person, as you yeah. know, the director there. Yeah. And uh, they do great work, again, you know, helping people break some cultural and economic yes. barriers. And I yeah. think that's what that's all about, part of the work that you do. Now, are you, uh, do you fundraise along with the Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County, or you fundraise kind of separately, or are they, are they an umbrella organization for you? Or? They're an umbrella organization yeah. for us. So they sponsor the human race which we participate mm -hmm. in and we fundraise through that and then we also have our own fundraising in fact we're having a pledge brunch on November 14th okay so if anybody was interested in coming to that they could um, contact yeah. our office right. and we'll give them information yeah. about that there is one other thing I wanted to absolutely <laughs> that's what we're here for <laughs> and I was talking with Jasiri because I had uh, observed her mother getting materials for b prior to starting her tutoring, right. and I thought that she was just a natural teacher, oh, but wonderful. she said she's not trained as a teacher. Mm -hmm. oh. And so about 50% of our tutors are retired teachers, but that means the other 50% are, are people like yes. Jasiri's mom, right. um, engineers, salespeople, mm -hmm. yes. clerks, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, and we have really good training, so that mm -hmm. really makes it easy for them. And the other part is we're attracting people that really want to make a difference. Yeah. And one of the things that I think about is it's so frustrating sometimes when you see what's going on in our nation's capital and you look at well, why can't they do this and why can't they do that and why can't they act. Yes. But this is something that you can do locally. Right. Yes. And you can see right before you that it's having an effect. And yeah. that's just such a wonderful yeah. feeling. It is. And I've said many times that we're, we're very fortunate to be living uh, in a city, in a county, that has so many people who are so willing to volunteer their yes. time, so willing to be engaged and participate in making it a better community. And that's just, uh, that's what makes this area, I think, you know, so rich and vibrant in many ways. I think and so. And it makes uh, the cultural diversity that we all you know, like to experience, you know, right. an opportunity for everybody. But uh, anything else that's going on with you at the, uh, the literacy program that you want to mention as we kind of move toward the end of the program? Um, I do want to mention that we are tutoring in the three county jails. I did mention that earlier. That's, I think that's just wonderful news. Yeah, and uh, something people may not realize is, you know, there are a few people in the jails that come from kind of ordinary backgrounds, but most of the people in the jails 
really don't come from the kind of stable, happy homes that most of us grew up in. So they're starting out you know, with a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And so when we test them in the jails, most of them test their math is at fourth grade level oh. and their reading and writing is very weak. Mm -hmm. And when you think <clears throat> about the kinds of jobs that are available in our society today, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me mm -hmm. that they're in jail because what kind of a job can you get? Right. right. You know, if you can't add one third and one third, mm -hmm. right. if you've forgotten how to do long division, if you ever learned it, mm -hmm. if you can't write kind of a basic letter or even a right. little memo. Right, of course. Um, and so we do work with those students. Um, some of them are ESL students, but mm -hmm. quite a few of them are just <clears throat> wanting to get a GED to right. improve right. those basic yeah. skills. And in your measurables, uh, are, are you trying to raise uh, the reading or comprehension level to, uh, to a, a seventh grade level or a high school level or a GED level or something like that for people that uh, particularly in the jails where really the, the level of comprehension and job skills are so low? Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're uh, again, we're working with what the students' goals are and right. quite a few of them it's have a, yeah, a goal said, of yeah. getting a GED. And then we find students that have even gotten a diploma, but their skills are weak for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And so we're just working in general to strengthen their skills right. in line with whatever their particular goals yeah. are. Yeah. And I thought it was uh, fascinating to me how it kind of gets passed around generationally with volunteers mm -hmm. who are expecting to see Jasiri being <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the yeah. university program at some point in the That's very right. future. Right. <laughs> Mother has anything to say about it. Uh, we've got another <laughs> minute and a half or two. Just uh, give us an overview, kind of, of, of what you see the future being for the literacy program. What, what your hopes are for it? Uh, my hopes are that your viewers will help us meet the need yeah. by helping someone to read, mm -hmm. that they will take that thought with them and realize it only takes a few hours a week. They don't have to speak a foreign language, they don't have to have teaching experience. The main thing is they need interest mm -hmm. yes. and they need commitment. We do ask people to commit for a year okay. yeah. or for students yeah. the, the length of the school year because mm -hmm. it takes that much time for a student to make a grade level yeah. gain. Mm -hmm. um, so we do ask that commitment. Okay. Um, but as, a, as I said, it's a minimal amount of time of course, each yeah. week and you have maximum right. impact. Jeannie, thank Absolutely. you so much for your work. Jasiri, thank you for being here. Of course. Uh, yeah, for your mother sitting in. Yes. Uh, hello to her when she's hello. out there. Uh, again, thanks so much for this great work, and I'm sure that our viewers will be fascinated to learn uh, what they can find on the website, how they can contribute, how they can become volunteers, and uh, we wish you all the best success in the future with this terrific program. Oh, thank uh, you. This has been Steve Plage for this issue of uh, Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, next month we'll have another nonprofit in Santa Cruz that's doing great work like the literacy program. So we'll see you next time on Nonprofit Spotlight. Spotlight. Thanks a lot. Wonderful.